Okay, let's start with this. Uh, I see a lot of people uh, had the uh, wrong answer. I don't know why. So as you see, there is a curved, curved uh, surface. It is not a linear inclined plane, but anyway, uh, when you release an object from top, uh, it will increase its speed, right, by going down. But the question is, uh, what is the question? Which one is correct? Both speed and acceleration decrease. Its speed decreases and its acceleration increases. Its speed increases and its acceleration decreases. Both speed and acceleration remain constant, etc. Whatever. Both speed and its acceleration increases. Most of the people have chosen the last one. So what do you say? These type of questions, okay, some, it seems like the, you have to do some uh, comments on it. Uh, you always, you always use formulations, okay? And since the, the question asks about the speed and acceleration, just uh, try to find an expression for the acceleration for this object, right? That means you have to show all the forces on it. And... The only thing is, the surface is not linear, but it's curved. But anyway, there is always a downward gravity. Oops. Right? We have mg. And by the component of mg, right, on the surface, the object will have some acceleration and the component right at this point let's say take this point uh, instantly or momentarily you may take the object is moving on a straight line straight uh, uh, surface so on this straight surface there will always of course be uh, some angle here and parallel to the surface you may uh, show the force on the object which will be mg times sine theta if this angle is theta right cosine is the normal force right if you have sorry uh, you're right okay this is not the angle Okay, this angle I'm talking about. This angle is theta, okay? But this angle will be the inclination angle of... Right? This angle. So, uh, there is always an angle-dependent force acting on the object, right? The, the point is, when the object is going down, since the surface is curved like this, this angle will decrease, right? The angle will decrease because at here, at here, the angle is less than on top and the object will see a smaller force. But anyway, there is always a force acting on the object downward, right? But parallel to the uh, surface. If there is always a force on it, there will be an acceleration, right? Uh, acceleration is always there. And acceleration is down in the downward direction is always positive, right? If you have a non-zero acceleration, you always have an increasing speed, right? So the speed is always increasing. But the only thing is the acceleration is decreasing. If the acceleration is decreasing, can we say that the speed is decreasing? For the speed to increase, it is enough to have a positive acceleration, okay? As long as you have a positive acceleration, whether it is decreasing or increasing, you have an increasing speed. The only thing is, the uh, speed of the object is increasing, but the acceleration is decreasing, okay? So this is the answer.
All right. Any questions or any any points that is not clear to you? And this is one of the other questions that uh, most of the people uh, fail. Uh, you have this Atwood machine. Two objects are connected by a string. And as you see, uh, we have the object A touching to the uh, wall. And this contact is provided by this horizontal P force. Okay? And we have another mass that we don't know. It's a uh, uh, mass, I think. Do we know? No, the mass of block X is known. It is 8.7 kilograms. So, the, for the surface, both uh, the static and kinetic friction is given. And the question is, the mass of the block, uh, the system is at rest. The friction force, including direction on the 5 kilogram bo block, on block A, is what? Where is 5 kilogram block? Uh, I think there is there is uh, there is something wrong with the question. Okay, the the initially the block the mass of the block is given as seven kilograms, but uh, the question ends with the uh, frictional force on the five kilogram block. There is no five kilogram block, so. Uh, Okay, anyway, uh, I will solve the problem without uh, considering the uh, numerical values, but I will uh, put both 7 and 5 anyway to find the answer. But uh, I have to correct this question for those of you who have taken this question. Anyway, uh, the P-force is given as 40 newtons to the left. And as an application of this P force, uh, do we have a normal force between block A and the wall? What is the direction of the normal force? Toward, toward, into the wall or out of the wall? Out of the wall. So there is a force of normal force on block A is normal force as a result of the application of p-force right because when you apply p-force the block a do not go into the uh, wall and this is prevented by the normal force and the normal force obviously will be equal to p right because a the block a is not moving in the horizontal direction if you write down the newton's law for the horizontal direction for block A, it will have zero acceleration. That means the normal force is equal to P. Why do we consider the normal force? Because the frictional force is proportional to normal force, right? The frictional force in here, uh, the type of friction is uh, static, and this will be equal to mu S times M. And the problem says the system is at rest, right? It is not moving. So that means all the forces, sum of all forces on the system must be equal to zero. Let's write down uh, the forces on A. Okay. The block S, the block X, is seven, eight point seven kilograms, and the block A is seven kilograms. 
if there were no friction, what would be the direction of the uh, motion? For block A, it will be upward, right? Because the block X has a larger mass. If you take A as 7 kilograms, not 5 kilograms, of course. Sorry? Block X has 8.7 kilograms. So if, if there were no friction, then the block A would move upward. But since there is a friction, then you can determine the direction of the frictional force, right? What is the direction? If the system is at rest and not moving, the frictional force will be down. Before you start solving the equations, of course, you have to determine the directions of forces, right? Otherwise, you will not uh, write the equations correctly. So now you are ready for block A. There is also the gravity, m times ma times g. And of course, for block X, we have m x times g, arrow downward. And for block A, we have tension, T, upward, the same direction for block X. The tension on X is upward. Supposing that the block A has a mass 7 kilograms, then, and if the all uh, system is at rest, then the net force on the system is, must be equal to zero, all right? So just write down the forces, Fs, the force of friction on A, plus Ma times G, Right? Minus, if you take the downward S plus, minus T must be equal to the mass of uh, A times the acceleration. Since there is no acceleration, the system is at rest. This will be equal to zero. Okay? And you, you may write down the same equation for x, uh, mg, mx times g minus t is equal to zero. You can replace t in the first equation as mx times g, right? Because if you solve this, t will be mx times g and in the first equation you have the force of friction is equal to t which is mx times g minus ma ma times g So the question is, uh, the friction force. What is the friction force? If we take Mx as 8.7 kilograms, and if the mass of Ma is 7, this multiplied by 9.8, 9.81 so let's do this uh, 1.7 times 9.81 so let, let's show this first of all we have mg the mass of block A times G downward and the system goes 
with a constant velocity, V is constant downward for A. Since we have a rough surface, the force on A, the other force on A, will be upward, which is the frictional force. What type of friction is this? It is kinetic because the uh, system moves. If it's moving, then we have a kinetic friction. We have a tension, T, for both masses upward. It's the same. And for X, MX times G, the force of gravity. So the question is, what is MX? How to solve it? Since we have a constant velocity, again, you need to balance some forces, right? Uh, we have zero acceleration. Uh, these forces are exter external forces on the system. And as I said, T is not an external force. If you think two masses as one system, T is not an external force. So the external forces are for A, if you take the downward as plus, MA times G minus FK and what else? This is the external force other than T uh, on A. So that's it. This must be equal to, to the external force on X. And the external force on X is MX times G. What is FK? FK is equal to first mu k times the normal force the normal force on mass a is this and since this n is balanced by p n must be equal to p so this is equal to mu k times p and you can find mx as ma what is ma 8 kilograms 8 times 9.8 minus what is mu k it is 0 0.3 times p is 50 newtons and everything is divided by g which is 9.8 and if you solve this you will see that mx will be equal to 6.5 kilograms kaç kişi doğru yaptı burada doğru yapan var mı çıkmamış olan da var olabilir soru soru There is always a long way to solve this problem, okay? Uh, long way is you draw free body diagrams for each mass and show all the forces including T, tensions, and solve, first of all, what will be the T, and then uh, you will have two equations with two unknowns, uh, T and uh, MX. So with these two equations, you may solve for MX, but it is long. This is the shorter way. And as I said always, uh, when writing down this balancing, you don't include T as an external force because 
the system moves with the same acceleration if it moves like acceleration zero or with the same velocity whatever it is all right well i was curious why a lot of people have done this incorrectly it's a very uh, easy problem i think <clears throat> so you have this uh, masses are connected to each other and there is no friction and the system moves with the same acceleration for M2 it is going down uh, the, the question is the tension the tension is is it larger than M2G or less than M2G or equal to M2G the acceleration is non-zero right the acceleration is Then what you do is, okay, uh, write down all forces on M2, M2G down, and the force which is upward will be T. If you take M2G as plus, M2G minus T will be equal to M2A, sorry. M to A. A is not zero, right? It has some acceleration. And you can easily solve for T. T is equal to M2 G minus M2 A. Obviously, it is less than M2 G. If A is larger than zero. So tension is smaller than the weight of M2. Is it clear? Well, maybe the question is is not uh, put uh, uh, exactly because in the question it must state that this acceleration is non-zero. Okay, but if there is a, there is this sign A, that means there is certainly an acceleration. And I may put the question in other way. If it were such a that such a case that uh, the system moves, M2 moves upward, upward, with non-zero acceleration, then what can you say about the tension? Will it be larger than M2G? or less than M2G. If the system moves, M2 moves in the upward direction with some non-zero acceleration. What can you say? If it moves upward, okay, you may take the upward as plus direction and if you write down the Newton's second law in that case T is up but M2G will be down, right? Yes. Minus M2G and this will be equal to I said the system M2 goes up with non-zero acceleration so A is positive then M2 times A sorry A so if you solve for T you will see that M2G, which is a positive quantity, plus M2A, which is again a positive quantity. In that case, the tension will be larger than M2G. It is obviously larger than M2G with this amount. Okay? This thing that we have, uh, I have uh, explained, in fact, uh, this elevator thing, right? In the elevator, if you're going up, your weight will be larger than your apparent weight. If you're going down with acceleration, your weight will look like smaller than usual. Hatırladınız mı? Okay. 
All right. Next question. You see, as labels one and two, uh, the strings, uh, at the end, a ball is attached. And this platform is moving, uh, is rotating, in fact. So this ball is doing a uniform circular motion, right? That we have seen uh, last time. The mass of the ball is given as 3 kilograms. And tensions are there, these 1 and 2, uh, they are string. And what is given uh, the shaft uniform rotation uh, with a speed of 2.5 meter per second. This rotation speed is given V 2.5. What is the question? Uh, the question is what is the tension in wire 2? Well, let's put the tensions on the string, first of all, the directions, okay? The tension for the second one is in this direction, and for the first one, it will be like this. And there is also another force on, uh, on the ball, right? Which is downward, the gravity, mg. And now we know, we show all the forces on, on, on. this is T2. This is T1 and Mg. So all forces on on the ball is shown. The length of the wires are given, uh, strings are given, 1 meter and 0.6 meters. And the point where the uh, vertical string is attached is 0 0.8 to the center, anyway. This is the right triangle. This means it's the right triangle, right? You can immediately put 90 degrees here with these given values of lengths. 3, 4, 5 triangles. If you uh, multiply this by uh, 2, 10, 6, 8. Anyway. So this is possible only if you have a right triangle here. Okay. So you can analyze the motion uh, by using uh, the concepts of uniform circular motion, uh, as we have seen in the previous lecture, in the uniform circular motion, we have an acceleration towards the center of the rotation. So we have, in fact, an acceleration. This is centripetal acceleration. And we know that the centripetal acceleration is v square divided by r. What is r here? So what is the, its value? 0 0.8 meters. Okay? Right? Okay. So it is 0 0.8 and I can work out then the Newton's second law, uh, the equations of motion. In, in, in the uniform circular motion, there are two directions. One is the central direction, okay, because you, we are using the polar coordinates, not the Cartesian coordinates. And during the motion, all the time, uh, the force in the direction of uh, central centrifugal in toward the, uh, we know the acceleration toward the center, okay. So we can write down the, all the forces in centripetal direction. In the centripetal direction, since T1 and M2G, M2G is up and down, they have no any components along the centripetal direction, right? So there is only one component in the centripetal direction, in the radial direction, which is the horizontal component of T2, right? And the horizontal component of T2 is... Let me clear this up. Uh, sorry. 
This, this is not a force, this is acceleration, okay? We have T2 radial and we have also T2 which is in the uh, upward direction, T2 Y, let's say. So, if you write down the all forces which is in the radial direction and this will be equal to m uh, the centripetal acceleration and m v square divided by r but the only component of the force is the horizontal component of t2 so t2 this is t2 times cosine of this angle, right? If this is theta, cosine theta, and cosine theta, what is cosine theta in here, in terms of these lengths? This is 0 0.6. And this is 0 0.8. And the hypotenuse is 1. Cosine is, cosine of this angle is zero point eight divided by 1. Is that true? By trigonometry. Since you know uh, this right triangle, all the lengths are uh, given. So anyway, I, I will put these numerical values later. This mv square over r. So let's write down what is the tension in the... Okay, T2 uh, is equal times... Let me write down T2. Cosine, cosine theta is 0 0.8, right? This is clear. Is equal to... Mass is given, 3. V is 2.5 squared. And what is R? Zero point eight. Zero point eight is the radius of the rotation, right? So that's it. T2 is here. Uh, is squared. And multiply this by three. Let's 